Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. I'm Becky Rakatowski, I'm the Associate Pastor, and it's my joy to be with you this morning, wherever you are. From our weekly notes this week, uh, we have Charge Conference coming up, which is the annual administrative meeting of the church. This year it's going to be done via Zoom, and you're all invited. Make sure if you plan to attend that, and that's October 26th at 6.30 p.m. If you plan to attend, make sure that you click the registration button uh, on your weekly notes and sign up. Uh, Zoom, uh, the Zoom link and details will be emailed to you, and that is also how we're keeping attendance for who's, atten who's gonna be there. So make sure that you do that. We have so many other things going on, I can't even list them all. So uh, make sure that you are getting our weekly emails. If you aren't, contact the church office. Uh, sometimes there's, uh, sometimes people get unsubscribed accidentally, uh, or sometimes a, an email address has been typed in wrong. So make sure that you're staying connected and getting those communications. Uh, God bless you this morning. Uh, let us join together as we worship. This morning's affirmation comes from 1 Timothy. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we come here today in fellowship with one another, setting aside this time solely for you. To offer you praise and worship, to hear you speak to us, so that we might be shaped a little bit more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. 
Oh God, we thank you for those times this week where we smiled and we laughed, those times of friendship enjoyed, of meals shared, those times when we appreciated the beauty of nature, when we felt a peace in our hearts, when we paused to be grateful for the life you have given us. For all of these and so much more, we know that we are blessed. For our days of difficulty and struggle, for the times when we have been less than our best, we give you thanks that you do not turn away from us and that we are never alone. The Bible tells us that when we confess our sins, you are gracious and just to forgive us and help us start anew. God, forgive us in your mercy. Lord, we lift up to you our church. We want St. Paul's to be strong and vital in our community. We want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. The need for hope, acceptance, love and compassion is great. And you're the answer to those needs. Help us to show others the way to you through our programs, through our ministries, and most of all, Lord, through our lives and example. Gracious God, we lift to you our country and its leaders. We pray that egos and power plays will be set aside and that wisdom, vision, and collaboration will prevail. You are sorely needed. Give our leaders compassion for the most vulnerable and give all of us discernment in our votes. Lord, for those who are sick, suffering, lonely, misguided, or just in need of your presence, we ask that you would touch them with your healing, with your hope, and with your peace. And so with the confidence and the joy and the promise we have because we walk daily with you, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, this is our friend Tallulah Field. Tallulah, did you know that your daddy used to be in my bell choir when he was your age? I don't think you can hear that. <laughs> anyway, we're so happy you're in third grade and that you are receiving the Bible today. Tallulah, it is my joy and honor to give you this Bible as you are now in the third grade. Here, go ahead and take it. And I hope that you'll be able to read that and learn more about God and about yourself and how much Jesus loves you. Okay? On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear, and he will destroy on this mountain a shroud that is cast over peop all people, the street that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will swipe away, will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken.
Thank you so much for that reading, Tallulah, and I hope that you enjoy that, that Bible. So why the imagery of a feast? This whole sermon series is titled From Feast to Feast. And that, that imagery of a feast crops up in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it's, it's closely tied with that future in which God makes all things new and the joining of heaven and earth. From the prophetic writing uh, in Isaiah that we just heard read, when God will swallow up death and wipe every tear away. Both of those uh, images are quoted from Isaiah in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians and Revelation. A feast is a celebration. It's a gathering. It's an excessive provision where everyone walks away satisfied. It's a symbol of victory and of blessing. Sometimes I think that we don't understand the full weight of this metaphor because we live in a land of plenty. Now, not everyone, about 20% of the people in Leon County are food insecure, which means that they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Or maybe they don't know if they're gonna have enough at the end of the month to cover the grocery bill or whether they'll have to choose between groceries and medicine. But for the majority of us, four out of five, and now those numbers are pre-COVID, by the way, but for four out of five of us, we have plenty to eat. Many of us, myself included, have never felt real hunger. But Isaiah is written to the Hebrew people when they were in bondage to the Babylonians, when they were enslaved people. And the books in the New Testament that quote from Isaiah are being re written and read to the Jews under Roman occupation and to Christians as they are being openly persecuted and put to death. They are written, these words, about a future feast and a heavenly banquet. They are written to give hope and encouragement in the face of tyranny and poverty. And so this imagery of a feast, it's, it's a future that is only hoped for, a reality that's, that's longed for but rarely experienced by the readers. It's not a regular part of their life. And we miss that sometimes when we read it. I mean, how many of you have already started planning your Thanksgiving? Just me? Okay, well, it's my favorite holiday. But for, again, for the original writers and the original readers of these texts, their reality was, was far different. And the point is that this metaphor of a feast, it reflects the way that we're supposed to long for the kingdom of God. And the imagery of God gathering all the people to come and, and sit and share in fellowship and celebration, to be filled and overflowing with the measure of God. Which brings me to that second part of this symbolism, feast to feast. Our sermon series uh, is talking about the communion table feast and the heavenly banquet feast. Christ said, I am the bread of life and whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And when he was with his disciples on the night before he was arrested and executed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he said that this is my body, take and eat. So we may look at the communion table, 
which will will be there in just a moment. But we may look at that communion table and say, that doesn't look like much of a feast, right? One piece of bread, my, my one tortilla doesn't look like a feast. And yet, because it is Christ that is offered, we say that it is more than enough. For his grace is sufficient. Those who seek, find. Those who ask, receive. Those who knock, the door will be opened. When we seek Christ, we are never left wanting. And yet for all of this talk of metaphor and symbolism, the reality is that Christ didn't just feed people figuratively. We talked about this a little bit last week. There are multiple accounts of Christ feeding thousands of people miraculously. Remember the story of the, the two loaves and, and, or the, I always, it's different in different uh, gospel lessons, but of how many loaves and fishes, two loaves, five fishes, I think, right? and how there were 12 baskets left over after feeding 5,000. Christ's first miracle was at a wedding feast of turning water into wine. There's both a present reality and a future promise in all that Christ does. And the same way we are called to live this way as well, longing for the, the day that God will set all things right when every tear will be wiped away and when every belly will be filled, but also participating in the ministry right now of handing out tissues and hugs and food. There's a present reality at the communion table that reflects the heavenly banquet. There's a present reality in Christ's ministry that's reflected in, in his, his ministry and what his, he taught about the kingdom of God. And this theology is what is behind our conference initiative that was started this summer. Knowing that times are going to be really tough, that even once the, uh, the virus once there is a, a vaccine and, and we've got things under control, we know that the economic reality is that there's, there's going to be ramifications long felt. And so the conference here in Florida, the Florida United Methodist Conference, has started an initiative called Fill the Table. And they've asked all of us, all of our churches, to focus on feeding people in this time of need. We don't want anyone to go hungry. And so I want you to watch this, this short video about this initiative. In the United States, 37 million people struggle with hunger. 11 million children across the U.S. live at risk of hunger. 3 million Florida residents experience food insecurity. And we know because of the impacts of COVID-19 that those numbers will drastically rise. of our Florida United Methodist Churches have listened to the invitation that Jesus gave us. The invitation to give our community something to eat. And now we need you more than ever for the Fill the Table initiative. Fill the Table was launched in July 2020 by the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. Through a network of statewide partnerships and collaboration, our goal is to feed 3 million Floridians by September 2021. We 
ask that each of our 40 United Methodist Conference churches get involved. On our website, fillthetableflorida.org, you will find many ideas. Maybe it's advocacy, spreading the word, or measuring meals. We are asking our churches each month to fill out a form on our website to report your monthly totals and help us reach our goal. We also have provided a helpful conversion chart for financial contributions for grocery store gift cards or for food pantries and greening. Are you ready, Florida United Methodist Conference? Are you ready to serve with your community partners? Are you ready to serve together? Are you ready to continue to listen to the invitation that Jesus gives us? You give them something to eat. Together, we can serve over three million meals. I am so proud of how St. Paul's is already helping to fulfill this vision of three million meals. We have continued and even increased our support of Manna on Meridian, which provides a bag of groceries, no questions asked at the end of the month. Um, we've begun helping feed seniors in our community through elder care. In fact, this has come in just this week and yet I think that we can do even better we have begun support for Project Annie which provides both groceries and community meals in Frenchtown we've begun volunteering with IGRO a community garden and youth-led program also in Frenchtown and we've continued the, the work in our own community garden here that provides more fresh vegetables for manna. Our soul food ministry has had to get a little creative, but they've still been providing meals for the homeless. These are amazing ministries. And they are making a real difference for people in this community through your donations, through your time, and your generosity, so that people here in Tallahassee don't go hungry. Don't give up. Don't grow weary of doing good. When you are tired, when you are in need of nourishment and strength, which I don't know about for you, but for me that is all the time, don't forget to come to Christ's table. All are welcome here. The table is set. The feast has been prepared. Taste and see that the Lord is good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
One of the things that I love about the Methodist Church is that we practice an open communion table, which means that this table, it doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to St. Paul's, but it belongs to Jesus Christ. And we believe that Jesus invites all to this table, regardless of your age, young or old, male or female, gay or straight, um, what, no matter what, able or disabled, friend or enemy, all are invited to this table. All are invited to partake. The only requirement is the desire to do so. And we believe that God meets us here that Christ meets us here. That these are outward symbols, invisible symbols of an inward and invisible reality of God's grace. That it, they aren't merely bread and juice, even though they are just regular everyday, ordinary elements. And yet there is an extraordinary God that is truly and really present here at this table. And during this time of pandemic, well, while we are on, uh, on just the internet with all of us, right? This table extends, it extends into your living room, your kitchens, your dining rooms, and God meets you there as well. And so Christ, again, invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. That's the cut to the choir reading the confession oh, reading right the confession there again. it's you could use the same recording okay honestly um hear the good news hear the good news christ died for us while we were yet sinners and that proves god's love toward us in the name of jesus christ you are forgiven Glory to God. Amen. As we come to this table, we give thanks. We give thanks for all that God has done, is doing, and is yet to do. And so, God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the way that you have created us and this world. We thank you for your faithfulness throughout generations, for the deliverance from slavery, for the deliverance from our sin, from the deliverance from the, even the hold that death has over us. And Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and through his ministry, through his life and death and resurrection, how he has broken the power of sin and death over us. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that is with us even now as we speak. And so God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your holy church, and by your holy spirit, and through your son, Jesus Christ, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
Amen. And so we remember that on the night that Christ was with his disciples before he was arrested and put to death, he took bread and he broke it. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we give you thanks, Lord. Now and into the future until we feast at your heavenly banquet. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Until Christ comes again in the final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet, may we be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world.